Howdy folks, I hope you're doing very good today. We're about to work about to look at some reels today. It's a perfect day for it because it's cold and blustery outside and uh, it's also not great fishing this time of year if you didn't know it. Pretty much the only thing we have running is speckled trout and black drum and uh, yeah I'm not about to go outside today. Uh, a lot of people have wanted to know what kind of reels they should buy for the jetties so this has been a long time coming. We're going to look at inexpensive all the way to the flagship top of the line name brand reels out there and I'm trying to make this one a little bit specific for jetty fishing because if you look back through my old videos a lot of them are at the jetty of course I have kayaking and from the boat and all that but uh, jetty fishing is where I'm a true specialist so this is going to be kind of a high high level overview of all the reels that work really well on the jetties so I have to make a few clarifications on you know the size of the reel it has to be able to hold about 200 yards 250 yards of 30 pound braid braid is the main thing we use at the jetties so that's what you're going to want to be able to have on your reel another clarification I want to add is that all these reels have been produced in the last five years and they're still in production today so I feel like it makes it a little bit more relevant and I just like new stuff so that's what we're going to be looking at of course there's some really really good older reels out there that are still being manufactured but I wanted to look at the newest technology another huge point of emphasis is that all these reels that we're talking about today have some form of sealing whether it's o-rings or gaskets or the Daiwa mag seal but they have to be able to take abuse they have to be able to take a splash and occasional dunks and still be able to perform because if you're worrying about your reel getting dunked when you're trying to land a fish or trying to catch a fish for that matter you're not going to be able to be as effective as you would if you have a reel that you can just abuse and not worry about it and also if you have a reel that is sealed on all the entrances you can actually blast it off with water when you're done fishing you don't have to worry about that water getting inside and even corroding because of course tap water can corrode reels as well and if your reel isn't sealed then make sure that you pack all the insides the inside of the side plate and all the bearings and the pinions and gears pack it all with grease because that'll prevent the salt from corroding all those parts another huge clarification is that these are all spinning reels which is what a lot of guys like to throw at the jetties as opposed to conventional bait casting reels. Um, you know, with this day and age of technology, we have braided lines so you can cast so much further with uh, spin gear. And uh, also, you don't have to worry about backlashing and losing your lures like you would with conventional. If you were casting cut bait or live bait on the bottom or under a balloon, you might want to consider uh, conventional reels a little bit more but for our, for our purposes we're using lures about 90% of the time and casting back to back all day long so the reliability of spin gear is just um, too, too good to overlook. So I separated reels into three separate classes. The first one is $50 to $150. We'll call these the uh, affordable reels. The middle class, which I really want to focus on the most, is 150 to 500 and the highest class is just above that. So for the very lowest class of reels, I want to breeze by pretty quickly because there's not a whole lot of reels out there at this price range that have any sealing functions. The first one I have is the Tsunami Shield that just came out last year, and this one has some amount of sealing. Of course, with these lower priced reels, the ceiling might not be complete on all the entrances to the body of the reel, but this one is very interesting and it might be worth a little bit of a look for you guys. But this is a new company to the spinning reel market, so I'd like to see maybe a couple more reels come out of uh, Tsunami. But if you want, check it out. It does come in at that price range. But the main one that I wanted to highlight in this class was the Daiwa BG. This one actually has a sealed drag, so the drag stack is sealed off. This one is a revamped model of the old 1981 BG. This one has a huge main gear and it's machined very well. All the parts apparently have very tight tolerances, so it can definitely take a little bit of abuse 
a little bit of dunking if you accidentally do that. And it's also very light for how much line it can hold. The BG5000 with 22 pounds of drag is listed at 22.6 ounces and it apparently can hold 480 yards of 40 pound J braid line. So that is pretty outstanding. And just for the heck of it, I'll include the Pen Battle 2 in this part of the review. I've never used the big sizes of them, but I do have two smaller ones. Texas Redfish Hunter just got one, so I thought I'd throw this in there just for him. But they are, they are pretty light for how much line they can hold. So moving on to the highest end reels out there. The biggest one everyone knows is the Daiwa Saltiga. You have your Expedition and your Dogfight, and that's what Morning Tide Fishing uses, if y'all are familiar with them. They just look badass. They're sealed at every point of entry, so the saltwater's not gonna get in there. You don't wanna be spinning them underwater, but if you're just, maybe have to make a short swim out to a rock, then it's okay if they go underwater for a few seconds. They have the tightest tolerances out of any reel on the market. They have great line capacity for their weight, and the smoothness of them is just unrivaled for a reel that size. Um, this is professional level, and uh, these reels, just like all the new dials that have been coming out, use ferrofluid oil to seal off the body at the handle knob, the main shaft pinion, uh, the side plates, and even the line roller bearing. This method of sealing requires servicing every one to two years, but as opposed to O-rings and gaskets, it makes all the moving parts flow and spin just a lot easier. So it's the best experience that you can have with a spinning reel. The next ones we have up here is another super spinning reel. It's a pen torque. Never got a chance to feel this guy, but uh, it's top of the line for pen. And uh, it's made right here in the US. So if that's your thing, your pen fanboy, maybe like thresher fishing, you might want to go for that. But they have sizes up to 9,500. The 7,500 version of the Torque has a weight of 26.7 ounces, which is pretty decent. A braid capacity that will let you put 470 yards of 50 pound braid. It's very good. That reel comes in at $750. So you're going to have to spend a pretty penny, and you're also going to have to worry about taking really good care of that reel. The next step down that Daiwa offers from the Saltiga is the Isla, which is a little bit heavier. It's gonna have less mag sealed bearings, so it's a little bit more susceptible to salt water. But uh, I think if you're gonna be spending a, anywhere in the thousand dollar range, the Saltiga would be the way to go. Another really interesting looking reel is the Akuma Makaira, which is brand new also to this market. Um, Akuma hasn't produced many high-end spinning reels in the past, but this one looks very interesting and I'm wanting to see them produce something in the mid-range market so we normie fishermen out there can test out some Akuma products because the Makaira looks awesome. Looking at the Shimano stuff, we have of course the Stella which changes every couple years. The main things about this reel is that it's going to last forever. It's fully sealed off with gaskets, O-rings corrosion resistant ball bearings. Another great thing about it is the structural integrity. You have your pinion supported on the top and the bottom, so there's gonna be less flex when you're fighting those big fish. It also has 15 bearings in it, which is pretty crazy and just makes the reel super smooth. Coming in at about $1,100, the 10,000 version has 55 pounds of drag and you can fit 360 yards of 50 pound braid on there. The Shimano Twin Power is the next step down from the Stella. It's basically a watered down version, a little bit less quality uh, materials and also less ball bearings. You only get 10 plus one as opposed to 14 plus one with the Stella. Also, if you're into the how it looks thing, uh, the Stella looks a lot more badass in my opinion. So if that plays into it for you, then go with the Stella. But either way, you're spending upwards of 700 bucks. So if you want the top of the line, go with the Stella. The last reels in this category are Van Stalls and Z Bass, which are pretty much the same thing. Uh, they're made by the same engineer who used to work at Van Stall and now works at Z Bass. But they're both fully sealed 
and you can even reel these things underwater in case you need to go reeling underwater for when you're catching fish or else just swimming out to your rock. These ones, they sacrifice the smoothness of the inertia that you have to use when you're reeling. Um, they sacrifice that for being able to not let any water in. They're the most sealed reels out of anything on the market. Um, also, they're super lightweight, so that's another great thing about them. You can fit 500 yards of 40 pound braid onto the Vanstall VR200, and it only weighs 17 ounces. That's pretty unheard of, but that'll set you back almost $600, which is not too bad. But if that's the kind of fishing you do, that's your reel to go for. I'd recommend the VR series of the Vanstall out of all the other series in their lineup. It's the most new one, came out two years ago. It's also the cheapest that they have. And in my opinion, the higher models of the fan stalls don't warrant the extra price tag. The VR basically has all the same features as the higher end ones and uh, you'll save a lot of money. So that should be it for those two classes, the high end class and then the low end class of reels. I'm sure I missed some that uh, might apply here. So let me know if I missed any that you really enjoy. And uh, let's move right on to the middle class, which is a, where a lot of us consumers are most interested in and just applies the most to us. We have, first of all, it's an old model, but the Spin, the Spin Fisher V made by Penn, it's actually fully sealed, so you don't have to worry about that corrosion. Um, it's been around for a long time, but I thought it would be worth a mention just because it's, it's such a good reel. Um, it's a little bit heavy for its line capacity, and it has a high gear ratio of 5.6, which is not very preferable for jetty fishing. It only has six bearings, so it's not the smoothest one out there, but it'll get the job done, and it comes in at $160, so it's a very good value. The next pen on the list is the Pen Slammer 3, which came out recently. This one actually looks pretty cool. Uh, Thresher Fishing, who you guys probably know of, uses this one as his main jetty reel. He uses a 5500 size, which has eight bearings. It weighs 22.4 ounces, gear ratio of 5.6 to 1, a little bit high, like I said, for my liking. If you have a lower gear ratio, like 4.9 to 1 or 5.2 to 1, you're gonna get a lot more power when you're reeling in big fish. And even when you're just working heavy three ounce spoons, or heavier lures, the lower gear ratio makes you feel like you have a little bit more control of that lure and maybe a little bit more feel, a little bit less startup inertia when you first start reeling. Going above 5.6 to 1 would be a little bit crazy and just unneeded. You don't really need something that fast. It's not like a bait caster that you're using in the bay or anything like that. But first, let's see what Thresher thinks of his Pen Slammer 3. He's used it for probably about a year now, so he should have a pretty good analysis. The pin slammer? Yeah, man. It's a pretty good reel, I guess, but it's like 7 a.m. How did you even get in here? Get out of here, man. Next up, we have a couple of Daiwas that fall into this range, and the first one is the Daiwa Saltist. Um, this is a step further than the Daiwa BG. They share a lot of the same parts, but the main thing about this one is it's more water Proof, more better sealing and uh, it's actually sealed on the main shaft and also the line roller bearing so you don't have to worry as much if you're dunking this one underwater and it also has a couple more bearings to make it smoother this reel also has a pretty high gear ratio though just like the pen slammer this one at the 5000 size has a 5.7 to 1 gear ratio but it does weigh only 22.9 ounces so it's definitely a good competitor in this field. One thing though that I really wish this reel had was either a round handle knob or else just an egg-shaped handle knob like the Shimano's. With these T-handles, I really have not enjoyed using them, especially when you're catching big fish. If the handle's not big enough, your, re your hand is really gonna cramp up. Next up, we have the Ballistic EX, which I've used a whole lot this past year. Cutting some big jacks on it. But the most awesome thing about this reel is how smooth it is to turn. It's absolutely amazing. It's got a pretty wide spool. I think I got about 220, 230 yards of 30 pound braid on here. And it's actually very light as well. It's only 13.9 ounces for the 4,000 size. 
and being able to fit that much braid on there is very nice. It looks pretty cool as well, but it does suffer from the same thing as the pen spin fisher and some of the other Daiwas of this T handle, which I really don't like. One time I was battling a 40 pound jack and my hand just trying to crank the jack in with this was just starting to cramp. And some reels will actually let you remove your handle knob right here via a screw, but this one you'd have to actually drill it out through here to replace the knob. And that might be kind of risky if you don't get the drilling process entirely correct. It's really nice to have a circular knob or some some kind of egg knob, something bigger than this, if you're ever expecting to fight any big fish. But also it looks really cool. It's got a great drag to it. The red accents I like and uh, top of the spool looks pretty nice. And it's good for uh, maybe smaller jetty fare such as redfish, um, but you're not gonna wanna fight any jacks or kings or tarpon on this. This one does have a reverse mechanism which you don't ever really want to turn on for any reason so the fact that it's there you know you can go either way I'd rather not have it um, personally just in case it ever gets flipped by accident this one oh I thought it did have a uh, automatic bail but it doesn't which is actually pretty nice and uh, hear that bail is still working everything's still working very great on this reel after a whole season of using it some of the proprietary Daiwa technologies is the air rotor, which is this piece right here. They've just engineered it in a way to have done away with a lot of the excess material so that the rotor, when it's shaped like this, can handle as much of a load as you'll ever put on this reel. And in my opinion, Daiwa has the best rotors. Uh, Digi gear, which is just how their main gears are cut. Um, the Zion body. It's just one of their proprietary materials. I've never had any parts of this reel flex on me from catching big fish. So, I mean, all the, those parts there have held up pretty well. This one, as you can see, is a lot more beat up. It's got scratches all over the rotor. But uh, this is the Shimano Spheros 6000. And this one is the most water sealed out of any of them. It's got the same exact sealing as a Stella, which is basically you have a gasket around the outside here, keeping water from going into the side plate. You have a gasket around your drag stack, your drag washers, and also the pinion, which is right inside the spool here. The only one thing that did go out on me for this reel was the line roller bearing. And this is supposed to be sealed as well. There is O-rings in here, but uh, it, it got pretty loud there for a while. I was getting a ton of comments saying that my reel was trash when really it was just the noise from this bearing and it was pretty loud if you had any load on there. Um, so you know if you're having trouble with your reels being loud first thing you should do take it off your rod see, see if it's this bearing. If you don't have your line going up through here connected to anything and you're just spinning your reel then if it's quiet, that means it's this bearing. So you can order these online. I got one on eBay, sent it from Japan. It took about a month, but uh, it didn't affect the functionality. It was more just, uh, it was pretty loud. <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit loud. Yeah. But anyhow, I really love the egg grip on here. One thing you want to look for in reels is how much play is in between this connection here. And there's really not much movement at all. So it's well made, tight tolerances. One last gripe I might have about it is the spool kind of looks like a tin can. But uh, if you can get over that, then this reel is really the best bang for your buck in my opinion. And I would have got another one of these, but I just wanted to try something else to have a little variety in the arsenal. But as far as the specs on this reel, it weighs 16 ounces, which is pretty solid for this size. This is the same line capacity as the Daiwa 4000. So you can see the discrepancy between manufacturer ratings. The 4000 
Daiwa and the 6000 Shimano is exactly the same. They hold about 230 yards of 30 pound braid. And I almost forgot to mention this reel was put to the ultimate test. It actually got spooled last year by a giant tarpon. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below. But it was pretty amazing. Um, people were saying that my drag was trash and reel was garbage and all that stuff because my line roller bearing was being loud. But really that's not going to affect your ability to catch a fish. When I did crank the drag down, it still burned off hundreds of yards of line like nothing. And um, surprisingly enough, the drag still performed all the way to the last bit on this reel. So I was pretty, pretty surprised by that. Another thing I love about this reel and this price range of reels is you don't have to baby them. And you can, you can worry more about fishing and uh, landing your fish than caring about your gear and whether it gets wet, whether it gets uh, banged up against the rocks a little bit. As you can see right now, the line lay on this reel is not the best. You can see it favors the top of the spool a lot more, but in the past, it was more of a vertical line lay, so I'm not sure why it has done this recently, but that's actually pretty bad. If you have your line like this, whenever it's coming off the spool, it's gonna grab these top rings of line here and pull those out prematurely. And that's gonna cause your wind knots but uh, I have to say overall, I haven't had too much wind knots with this reel. The main way to avoid them is just don't over spool your, your reel and you'll be good. But the last reel I wanted to talk about today is the one that I just got in here. It's a Saragossa 10,000 SW. This one, very, very similar to the Shimano Spheros. The only thing that's different is apparently it has an extra drag stack on the bottom as well. So it's gonna have a little bit more capable drag. Um, obviously this is a bigger size and uh, the trim on the spool is a little bit different. This handle looks pretty well as awesome. You see it's got the X-Ship technology, which is just the way that they CNC cut their gears. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using this one. I'm gonna spool it up with about 360 yards of 50 pound braid. You know, there's not too much to say about the Saragossa that you couldn't say about the Spheros. Um, I wanted a bigger size so that I could just lock down the drag on fish this year. Um, also he fit a little bit heavier line to avoid being cut off on jetty rocks so much. Also just wanted something that looked a little bit different than this guy right here. But uh, yeah, it has actually one more ball bearing as well. So that's a Shimano Saragossa. For the 10,000 size, it cost about 290 bucks. So it's a full $100 more than the Spheros for the couple small things that you get. But effectively, it's the same thing as the Spheros with a $100 extra price tag. So I'm looking forward to using it this, this coming summer whenever the pelagic fish move in, the kings, tarpon, all that kind of stuff. But I'm really digging the Shimano reels and uh, hopefully Daiwa can release their mag sealing oil sometime in the future because uh, like I said, that's how they seal all their reels, and it's also a proprietary fluid that they use. There's substitutes that you can use, but they actually cost a bit of money. So that's pretty much it for my reels, at least the ones that are very useful to the jetties. And there's been a lot come out recently, but I'm waiting for more reels in this size range and price range to come out on the market. Uh, the ones recently we've had come out, uh, there's been a new ballistic by Daiwa. There's been a new Exelor uh, Fuego, also by Daiwa, uh, Stella FJ, uh, new Stratic SW coming out, but they all don't go up to this size. They're a little bit too small. This is not even that big of a reel, so they should make those reels in a little bit bigger size. So there's really not that many options out there. So hopefully this review can narrow it down for you guys a little bit. But if you guys want to check out more reviews on reels, a lot more in detail than what I just said today, uh, check out alanhawk.com. I actually pulled a lot of information just from his website. He does great breakdowns of the reels. He does more detailed reviews. He's like the guru of spinning reels and knows exactly about every part of it. But another great resource is Tackle Advisors on YouTube. I've really been digging his content lately. He talks about some of the new reels that are coming out on the market and breaks down reels as they come out, does a full review. 
So that's pretty much it guys. I've done a lot of research lately on reels just because I was, I was looking to get a bigger reel. Ended up going with this one, but I mean, it's all interesting looking at all the different options. Another reason I went for something a little less expensive, I could have gotten a Saltigo or Stella or whatever, but I also wanted to try out some of these reels for you guys so that you all know what to buy as well. Jumping straight to the top of the line is not very relatable and uh, people won't people won't connect with it as much as if you're using some street grade equipment. <laughs> I might also record a couple more informational videos which aren't as fun as catching fish, I know, but uh, hopefully you guys benefit. The other ones I wanna do coming up here soon is how to make a lemon rig. Uh, so let me know if y'all wanna see that or if maybe y'all wanna see how to rig a three ounce spoon first. I've gotten some requests for that too. Um, we use those three ounce spoons for redfish, kingfish, jacks, and tarpon will hit them too. So uh, got some good stuff coming up. I have been traveling like nonstop. Y'all may not realize it, but I'm only, I've only been home for like 10 days so far this whole year. Um, so hopefully in the next couple days though, I'm gonna be doing some fishing, going for some big drum. Coming up, I'm going to Japan, so I might take a tour of the Daiwa factory or Shimano factory or something like that. Uh, that should be pretty cool. Maybe do some fishing. It is winter time over there though, so I don't know how that's gonna be. But also, got a Pacific Island coming up on the schedule, so I'm gonna be maybe going for GTs, maybe a little tuna action from shore, hopefully. So that might be some pretty interesting stuff. This reel is definitely going to help for that, but hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.